Hey guys, another bush here and welcome back to the channel. Or if you're new to the channel, welcome, it's nice to meet you. Hope you guys are doing alright. And today we have a video on a game called Humankind, which I've been playing quite a bit recently. This came out I think in August. Um came out from the studio Amplitude Studios. I played a lot of the games before. And yeah, this game is really cool too. So I decided, you know what, I should, you know, go through some tutorials and in the future I'll be also do just doing gameplay of me playing a, a game, like generally. That's enough of the intro. Let's get into this. So firstly, I have to explain what Humankind is. So Humankind is a 4x strategy game based around cultures throughout history uh, of the human race, basically. Um, all the way from the Egyptians, um, all the way to now, in these days, where we have, you know, countries like the Soviets, uh, Americans, you know, and the, the British being powerhouses around the globe. So it's pretty interesting. There's a lot of strategy, a lot of mechanics to go with this game, but bear with me over the series, I'll explain it and you'll be able to grasp quite a lot of it, hopefully. Now that we've gotten some introductions out of the way, let me just um, explain to you how the game kind of works. So, as you can see on the board, we have different hexagons here. And this game is a hexagon based game, so everything is based on a hexagon grid, basically, as you can see. Um, the green parts of the map is where you can move. You know, here's the sea, as you can see. Um, you can't, unless you have a boat, you can't move across the sea. Um, and this is my character here. So once you start, you'll be plopped on the map randomly. Um, you'll be able to customize your game as much as you want. And then you're plopped in. And then you basically have to earn stars to get to the next era. So you can actually pick your culture. And this video is about the Neolithic era and how you actually survive the Neolithic era and how you get to the next era. Just a bit of basics, a bit of tactics and strategies that you can, you can use. So let's get started. Alright, let's get into actual gameplay. So click on your unit if you want to move them. Um, up here on the left, right sorry, you can see you have you have uh, some army actions which are all these circles, and you have different abilities you can actually do. Um, in the in this era right now, we're just pretty much going to move. So what you can do is you click on unit, you can actually right click to kind of drag where you want to move to. As you can see, the one means basically this is where where you can move in this one turn, and then when it says two, that means in two turns, three is a three turns, four is a four turns, and so on. Um, of course, there's a mountain here, so you can't actually go across the mountain, but it isn't in the, the range of vision yet, so it's, it doesn't recognize that. So I'm just going to move my unit this way. And you can see here, here's a curiosity. Curiosities are certain um, things that you find to discover to give you uh, points towards you getting a star to get to the next era. And that's a good point to actually get into what stars actually are. Alright, stars. If you look at the top left of the screen, I'm going to hover over this circle here. You can see on the left side, it says goals. So in each era, you have um, basically goals which you get throughout stars. And you get stars by accomplishing certain activities within the game. It could be like a building star by building a lot of um, districts um, within your cities. Or it could be population stars by having a lot of population. Or simply enough, it could be um, stars with combat for fighting a lot of enemies. In the Neolithic era, it's a bit different, as the stars are a bit, uh, a bit um, stripped down and a bit easier to actually achieve. The first star being about population, uh, depending on your speed of your game, um, the, the requirements will change. So I'm playing on normal right now. So the normal speed gives me I need at least five population. I'm starting with one, so I just need four more. Or if I'm on the scientific one, it's you need ten um, curiosity science points, and for the last one, you need to hunt at least five animals. Now, as you see here, I'm going to go for this curiosity. Even those who have disappeared may have done something very clever. And I probably should turn that off. Give me a sec. Okay, I'm back. I turned off the narration. All right. So, yeah, as you can see, if you see current science, I got one. That gave me one science for that curiosity. And I need 10. So, I need to keep on looking. And that's what we're going to do. So, I'm just going to be moving around the map and looking for different stuff. So, we can see we got two feed ones here. Food is quite nice. I mean, more population is always good, so I can have more people running about. If you see here on the right side, I've got 15 now, and if I get 20 food, pretty much they're having a, gonna have a baby, and we get another population. Here's another science. But there's a river here. I need to go down in the river to get there. And river actually hinders your movement. Um, it actually takes two. It takes all your movement to go in the river. Um, right here on the right side, I'm just gonna ransack. Um, 
this layer. Layers are certain spots where animals will come out of to give you more materials and you can fight animals or you can ransack them. And if I ransack, you can see here, I'll get 20 food for ransacking. One other thing here, as you can see, uh, this is an event and you'll get loads of different events in the game. We're not going to go too much into this right now. But you get options and different options will change certain stuff in your game and it helps you to actually build what you do for the future. So right now I have two of these guys, which is pretty handy. I can split them up by clicking on one of the units and this is another action, transfer. See, I transferred them here. I got two more signs, which is good. And this allows me to actually move my other unit at the same time. Oh, and there's another food. That's useful. One more quick thing about stars. To get to the next era, you don't need all three of these stars done. You just need one. You need one of the bunch. So get that one and you're good. So next, I want to talk about battles. So as you can see on my screen, I've been moving quite a bit. I actually found another tribe in this era. And they have one unit here with 10 strength. You can see the 10 with the arm um, pumping up. That's 10. Uh, right next to it, by the way, that's movement. After that, that's um, the range distance. So you, you can only hit with one hexagon in front of them. And lastly, I think that's their level. I have two of 10. So what I'm going to do, you can right click and to attack. And when you when you hold right click, it'll actually show you the preview of your strength. So I have 20, they have 10. And it will show you the spawn place, how big the battlefield is and so on. You can come in from different angles and it will kind of show you a different view, which is pretty cool. It shows you how you can play about with the strategy. But this guy's most likely going to run away, but let's try it. He retreated. Um, this is why it's ideal for me to actually find some animals, but I'm not finding any animals. But you know what? When I find an animal to kill, I'll let you know. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. So this guy came back and he decided to attack me instead. Um, attacking me gives him an advantage because when you attack, when you're the attacker, you actually get to attack first, um, which is a big advantage because you get to choose who you go for. And um, definitely if you have range units, so first you can either accept or retreat and I accepted. Now accepting I can actually move my troops within the the colour of my um, um empire. So I've got blue, so I can move it within the blue. The enemy can move it within the the brown. I'm gonna move mine to the back. Um reason being you can see these things here, these are hills. And if you have the high ground on hills, you actually get increased damage by four, which is quite strong. Now he's the attacker, so he's gonna. Okay, he came up towards me. Now you may be wondering, okay, why did he take more damage than me? Quite simple. So on the first turn, you actually defend automatically. You're defending, and when you defend, you get plus two um, defense on your on for your your uh, attack. Okay, you get plus two attack basically. <laughs> this is bad to say. Defense and attack is the same thing. You just get plus two on the stat basically. As you can see now, I get plus one from friendly unit, which is cool. Um, the more, the more, the stronger you are. It's all about that those units, man. You need to get those units up. Um, and if I put him here, he will also get the buff, so they'll be both plus one in each other, so extra damage. But I'm gonna use a bit of a trick. I'm gonna move him here. So if you can see these white marks here, right? These marks basically mean that someone's kind of blocking you from going f further. It means you can only move when you're next to an ally which has an enemy with this type of symbol it means you can only move one spot when you're next to them but so this guy can only move one spot if he's going in a straight line but you see if he's going around he can move more but if he's going if he wants to move there he needs to go around he can't go straight and if i want to go up there i can't i can only move one but it's a trick so you can actually move through through your units your allies for an extra one movement so instead of just moving one i can move two here so i moved him to position here and then uh, now i can move this guy to move again you see that it's like we're, we're, we're tethering each other across and if we had three people we probably could have done quite a lot more and it's just this is a real advantage because look the high ground gives me plus four so now i have plus 15 instead of doing just um 30 damage to him at max, I can do now 39. Fire. Great. Of course, it's RNG, so I did 33, but that's still good. Get and another 21 now. 
He's going to take my flag. But it doesn't matter, he's dead. And there you go. And then after you complete the battle, you can open up the uh, um, the screen that told you just a report of what happened. And pretty much what happened was, you know, he lost all his units and I only took a lot of some damage. And that's the gist of battles. Um, in more videos, we go across more battle battles. But you really want to make sure you, you're actually looking at your surroundings. As you can see, these are like hills. You don't want to fight from the low ground. You want to fight from the high ground when possible. You don't want to fight within rivers because rivers also give you um, minuses. Use everything to your advantage, every single thing, where you place your city and so on. But we'll get into that later. Let's get into the next part of this video. Wait, whoa, he's trying to fight me again. I'm not gonna deny his... Deny him. I was just about to, you know, in turn as well. Okay, this time it's time to be up here. And he actually has quite a lot more damage this time. So what I'm gonna do... I'm gonna move this guy... I'm gonna move this guy up here. And should we attack? Uh, no, we're gonna defend. We're gonna defend with him. And this guy we're gonna attack. If you know he's low ground, just help this guy out, because this guy's gonna get attacked most likely. Oh, the AI's a bit dumb. Okay. Together. Okay, off. Wait. But yeah, that's it for this combat section. Um, see you guys in the next part. Now, one thing people may be thinking and wondering about is settling. So. As you can see, these dotted lines around here, these lines actually uh, are for different regions in uh, a certain um, landmass they're in. Um, so you can see this is one legion. This is another region here. And you can see these brown parts here. This is the computer who put down um, an outpost in a region of his own. To do that, you have to click on one of your units and your unit actually places a legion, um, claims a territory like this. And then you can place it anywhere on the map. Those numbers that show up are those um, resources that you'll gain each turn, um, placing it wherever you place it. So you may be, people may wonder, like, is it good to place it on your first turn or should you wait? I mean, not first turn, so you need influence as you do it, but you may be wondering, is it good to place it in this era, in the Neolithic era, or should I wait until I get to Ancient Era? Um, my suggestion to you is, if you feel like, you found a spot you can take a really big advantage of, place it as soon as possible in the Neolithic era. If it takes you a bit longer, then it's fine to wait until the ancient era, but don't wait too long as the computers will plant a lot of land quickly. Um, as you can see below me, we also have the oh, yet yeah, the jet yeah, greens. I, I just noticed them right now, so that's quite interesting. Um, and there's also the smaller um, AI one a part of these five here um that actually also uh, plan get their own territory as well um so you know don't take too long but don't you know find a good spot so th this one's really good in, in industry and it's really bad in food but uh, it's it's good overall so i could i could deal with that but yeah if i was good for you i'm just gonna land it here just so you can see i've landed it um so i get resources from all of the five uh, hexagons around it and if I just end turn, it said it'll take one turn to complete. Cool, we, are, we now have an outpost, which is great. Um, outposts take industry to complete, so the more industry, the faster it becomes. But once once it's built, um, food can actually get more people on there, so it's ready for you when you convert it over to a city. For you to actually have some population in it straight away. To do to turn it over to the city, you need to actually go to the next era. Um, which you'll see later on in this video. Now we're getting to the last part of this video. So at the top left, you can see this is now shining, sparkling even. Because I have eight out of five units, so I've gone way above what I need. You only need one star. I'm gonna click this. And you can see it's come up with the screen of many different cultures you can actually choose from. There's ten, ten in each era. And this is great because the computer has actually chose one, so I can show you. It says an unknown has already picked that culture, therefore it cannot be chosen by anyone else. So once you choose a culture, no one else can choose one. Bear that in mind. So you can use tactically, maybe there's a really good culture everyone's looking for. You can, you know, get it first before everyone. Or you can just go something that you really, you really vibrate and you think in your situation is great. Um, 
We'll do more of this in another video that I'm going to come up with is how to choose your culture. But briefly, what I'll say is that you should pick a culture that is um that you think would work well in your situation. Um, you don't always. I don't think you always want to pick a certain culture every single time. Although there are some cultures better than others at the moment. Um, but I believe a lot of the times this game is very situational. Depending on where you are, what you need is what you need to pick. But if I was just going to give a, a brief um, just suggestion, I would actually suggest the Egyptians. They're pretty broken. They're S S S here in my book. Um, industry is such a powerful tool. But we'll get into that into the next part of the video. Um, but yeah, once you all you pretty much do is I'm gonna you know I'll click the Egyptians. I'm gonna adopt. Uh, and now my character's changed the clothes. You can actually see um, different. Different one, they change clothes depending on the culture, it's pretty cool. And even face markings. Uh, one more thing to actually take notice is if you click more details, it tells you um, the, the affinity um, of this culture. It also tells you um, that each culture has like a passive. So like here we have fertile and indations or whatever. And here we have grand planners. Um, so d different um, things you get for each culture, which is really cool. And then they get a unique unit as well they can build. It's, we call them districts in this game, so unique district. And then below that, they have a unique unit. Um, so every class has that, which is really cool. It makes them really define them out differently from others. Now, previously, I just said about um, different types of affinity. So there's um, a builder affinity. There are um, agrarian affinity. There is the military affinity. Um... There's the merchant affinity. There's the I can't pronounce that. Um, something to do with <laughs> influence affinity. Um, and there's the expansionist affinity. Oh, there's also the scientist affinity. So I think that was around six. So there can be multiple types of that. So for example, we've got two, uh, two militaries here, the Hittians and the Mycenaeans. Or you could have here the, the Nubicans and the Phocians, um, if I'm saying that right, who are both merchants. So, but they both work in different ways. For example, look, um, the, uh, these guys have plus two uh, money per trader, while these guys have, you know, more money on resources, which is pretty cool. And they, the units, everything is different. So every culture in this game is different. So you need to really think about what you want for the situation. But we'll get into that more in another video. Oh, I didn't show you, but pretty much what you do, what you do is once you click adopt, adopt toy, and you click confirm. Um, I'm just gonna tell these guys to wait, so we can go to the next turn. And then when you go to the next turn, I'm just gonna skip this cutscene. Yep, now we have now we, now we're the Egyptians. The music playing in the background will be based on your culture as well, which is pretty cool. Um. Now we get these basic scouts upgrading from our other units, 13 strength, and we can start building stuff as the Egyptians. This is pretty damn good. So now we're just going to go over some extras, some tips and tricks, and so on. Um, firstly, we're going to be talking about movement. Okay, forces. If you can, if you hover over this, you can see this is a forest, and at the bottom left, you can see base movement it costs two points. So moving through each forest costs two points. So if I move right now, I've got two movement. I can only move between one forest. But if I moved, let's say, um, I'm I'm in the forest already. So no matter where I move, I can only move one. Kind of sucks. Do it. Oh, I'm in five over. If you feel like you you can't bother, you can just um, instant resolve. But if you remember. I completed this fight quite easily. Um, I'm asked, I'm probably going to lose a unit here. Wow. See, all, um, instant resolving isn't the greatest. Um, the enemies do a lot better <laughs> against your allies. I mean, the, uh, your NPC. The NPC is pretty bad. Um, there is an option to actually place the positioning for your units, and then you can auto start the battle, so they'll move uh, while you actually get to at least. Um, Put them on the map which is pretty useful at least another tip is spread out units where possible 
like I was saying before, you want to place your units out so you can spread them out. And this way you can get more stuff done. This guy can move this way, this guy can move that way, you can get this. And he could have got that if I moved him properly. So it's good sometimes to spread out units, find as much as you can. But when it gets to actually some harder beasts like mammoths, maybe you might need two units. So just bear that in mind. But mammoths don't actively attack you, which is the good part. Bears do though. So um, I guess you have at least some course, you have at least some safety net there at least. I suppose the question people might have is, should I be thinking about, and that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you like what you saw today, like below, comment as well. And yeah, tune in for the next videos in Humankind. I'm going to have quite a couple. This game is a great game. It's really cool. Um, You know, the music is amazing. The gameplay is really fascinating. So yeah, stick by and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.